Hello! In this video, we are going to prove that the limit as x approaches 0 of 1 over x does not exist. And so to prove that, we are going to prove, given any real number l, the limit as x approaches 0 of 1 over x is not equal to l. So let's give ourselves an arbitrary real number l. And from here, we proceed to show that the limit as x approaches 0 of 1 over x is not equal to l. Now, to show that the limit as x approaches 0 of 1 over x is not equal to l, we are going to use the negation of the definition of a limit. So, using the negation of the definition of a limit, to say limit as x approaches 0 of 1 over x is not equal to l means the following. It means there exists a delta not greater than zero, such that for every delta greater than zero, there exists an x not in the non-zero real numbers, such that zero is less than the absolute value of x not minus zero, which is less than delta, and the absolute value of one over x not minus l is greater than or equal to epsilon not. So, to prove the limit is not equal to l, we want to prove that this statement is true. And so, to prove this statement, our choice of epsilon naught here is going to be 1. With this choice of epsilon naught, we proceed to prove this statement. And since we're trying to prove a statement about every delta greater than 0, let's give ourselves an arbitrary delta greater than 0. And from here, we want to find an x naught such that this happens. So what we're trying to do here is we're trying to find an x naught that is small enough so that the distance between 1 over x naught and L will be greater than or equal to 1. Now, as you can imagine, if we choose x naught to be a positive number that is so, 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 so small, we can make it so small that 1 over x naught can be as big as we like. So we can make it so that 1 over x naught will greatly exceed L. So certainly 1 over x naught will exceed L by 1. So how small do we need to make x naught so that 1 over x naught minus L is greater than or equal to 1? Well, it suffices to figure out how small we need to make x naught so that 1 over x naught minus absolute value of L is greater than or equal to 1. Because if we find an x naught such that this happens, well, then we know that 1 over x naught minus L is greater than or equal to 1 over x naught minus absolute value of L. So we'll follow that 1 over x naught minus L will be greater than or equal to 1. So we just need to choose an x naught small enough so that this happens. So how small does x naught need to be so that this happens? Well, solving for x naught here, we see that x naught needs to be less than or equal to 1 over 1 plus absolute value of L. As long as we choose x naught so that x naught doesn't exceed this value, we should have absolute value of 1 over x naught minus L greater than or equal to 1. But we also need to make sure that our choice of x naught here is less than delta. So we're going to choose x naught to be a positive number so that x naught does not exceed 1 over 1 plus absolute value of L, and so that it is less than delta as well. So we're choosing a real number, x naught, such that x naught lies between 0 and the smaller of these two positive values. With this choice of x naught, we are going to show that it satisfies these conditions. Now since x naught is greater than 0, we know that x naught is a non-zero real number, so this is satisfied. We also see that 0 is less than x naught, which is less than delta, and since x naught is positive, x naught is equal to the absolute value of x naught. So we have 0 is less than absolute value of x naught, which is less than delta. 
and absolute value of x naught is equal to absolute value of x naught minus zero, so this is satisfied as well. But now we want to verify that this condition is satisfied, and that will come from the fact that we chose x naught so that x naught is less than one over one plus absolute value of l. Since x naught is less than one over one plus absolute value of l, if we divide x naught to the other side and multiply one plus absolute value of l to the other side, we get this. So then we subtract absolute value of l to the other side, we get this. So now we're going to see that this actually happens. Notice what we can do here is we could apply the reverse triangle inequality. The reverse triangle inequality tells us that the absolute value of this guy must be greater than or equal to the absolute value of the absolute value of 1 over x naught minus absolute value of l. Since x naught is positive, we know 1 over x naught is positive, so we can remove the absolute values there. So really, we have the absolute value of 1 over x naught minus absolute value of l. But we know that 1 over x naught minus absolute value of l is greater than 1. So it's positive, and therefore we can move, or we can remove the absolute values. Right, but we know that it's greater than 1. And so we have the absolute value of 1 over x naught minus l is greater than 1, and hence greater than or equal to 1. So, our x naught here satisfies all these conditions. So we have shown that this statement is true. And therefore, the limit is not equal to L. But since L was an arbitrary real number, this shows that the limit as x squared to 0 of 1 over x is not equal to any real number. Therefore, the limit does not exist. And so this completes the proof. And so yeah, that's pretty much it for this video.